Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Andy Godoy Show. I'm your host, Andy Godoy, and I'm back again with another episode of this podcast slash video. So anyway, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite, well, top 10 Super Nintendo games. I'm recording all this on the fly on my new podcast, uh, Roadcaster Studio. So let's make that music go down a little bit and hopefully I'm fading this in and out properly. Now I'm going to be doing this on the fly. I want to mix in some music. Hopefully it will all work out well. And the reason why I got all this amazing setup, because it is kind of flashy, is because... It basically re it records the music, so I can record music from my iPhone, uh, and it can play so what you guys can hear it. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm loving the setup. This is my current setup. So it's a Rodecaster Studio I'm using a Rode Procaster microphone. I've got a cloud lifter, which gives this microphone some clean gain. I've got some presets already recorded there. I, oh, I love it absolutely love it so anyway yeah today i'll be talking to you about my top 10 favorite super nintendo games but also i'll be telling you a little bit about my history with uh, the super nintendo so i'll backtrack a little bit so when i was probably about what six or something like that i got given an atari 2600 junior absolutely loved it i played loads of arcade conversion games like donkey kong mario bros um moon patrol jungle hunts uh almidar uh, i just I, I loved that console and then um i ended up getting myself a zx spectrum and i love my specky specky oh i'm all about the specky and then after that i got myself a sega mass system and um the reason why i got myself a sega mass system some people may be wondering not an nes is because over here in the UK, the Sega Mass System reigned supreme. The NES really only had a big foothold in, like, say, Japan, and mostly in the States, where, you know, everyone rants and raves about it. And again, I'm not knocking the NES. I love the NES, but um, I didn't really know many people that had an NES. I mean, I'd only played uh, just a couple of games from my mate Dan's house, uh, he owned an NES, but what was freely available and also had some amazing arcade conversions was the Sega Mass system. You had you know, arcade conversions of Outrun, Altered Beast, Chase, and what was it called? Um, oh, Golden Axe. Uh, there were so many other games. Uh, Alien Syndrome, Alien Storm, Dynamite Ducks, Captain Silver. I, I loved my arcade games, and they had some great conversions. But, um, yeah, so... Then I, a few years later, I started seeing uh, reviews on a magazine about what had just been released in Japan, and it was this new console, and I read, I think, it in either CMVG, uh, you know, or Nintendo Magazine, and, oh, actually, it was probably Total Magazine, which I've got that issued behind me, actually, somewhere there, and um, I saw a review of Super Mario World. Now, the Mega Drive was out, and I had played the Sega Mega Drive, but the way they sold it on this magazine was that it was the best 16-bit console out there, and I'd saw, I'd saw that, you know, like, how amazing the graphics were. I saw, like, um, Super Mario World, all its hidden levels and stuff like that. I saw the screenshot, say, of a Super Ghouls and Ghosts, the graphics in comparison to Ghouls and Ghosts on the Mega Drive. And it's just... I really wanted a Super Nintendo for one reason, and one reason alone that made me sway in that direction. You know, there was Sonic on the Mega Drive and a few arcade conversions that were really good. But there's one game that at the time this Mega Drive didn't have, and that was Street Fighter. Now, I had a PAL Super Nintendo, which I bought. I'll tell you a little story about that. I saved up my money because I was working in a hotel, the Four Seasons Hotel at, on the Eden the Park, uh, in Park Lane. And um, my mum wasn't charging me a lot of money because it was my first proper full-time job uh, when I left school. And I bought myself a Super Nintendo, I knew that it had been released on import, so I went to a little shop on uh, Lavender Hill, uh, which is near Clapham Junction, South London, and I bought myself an adapter for the Super Nintendo. So that cost me about mm, 80 or 90 pounds, and then I bought Street Fighter II The World Warriors, and that cost me about 120 pounds. And the way this adapter worked was you pop it on, and then after that... Uh, you put a PAL game in and Street Fighter 2, the uh, Japanese version, and I could play it. And oh my God, I loved that game. 
I, I loved it. I love my Super Nintendo and I have so many memories of it, you know, just playing it nonstop all the way through to my 20s and stuff like that. Now, I haven't got a Super Nintendo now anymore because I gave it to my daughter. You know, I gave her all my games and it just stops me from collecting or picking up and spending money on games and room and stuff like that. So she collects things like that. So I gave it to my oldest daughter and... Um, but what I do want is a Super Nintendo Mini because it's just the ease of playing games here and there. And, and I can add a few extra ones as well. So it's just all there. And um, But now, believe it or not, guys, I'm more of a Sega Mega Drive fan, but I'll save that for another podcast. I love my Super Nintendo. So anyway, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to get my phone here. I don't know if you can see it. And um, I'm going to play some music, uh, a little bit of music from uh, my favorite Super Nintendo game. So the first game I'm going to talk about at number 10 then. Um, here we go. Hopefully this will fade in nicely. I'm going to just do it all on the fly. And the game I want to talk about is F-Zero on the Super Nintendo. Listen to some of this music. How cool is this? So, F-Zero on the Super Nintendo, what a game. Now, I picked up this game and I was blown away by it, you know. I'd never played anything like this in the arcades or any computer or any console before that. Honestly, this game just completely wowed me. You know, it was bright, it was colorful, it was fast, it was futuristic. The music, just at the time, I thought it was just mind-blowing. And it was just the illusion of speed as you're speeding along in your sort of like hover car. And, you know, like you can sort of like get speed boosts and stuff like that. And the screen was just rotating and turning. And, you know, if you did hit barriers, you could get yourself some energy from the little thing. And it made that sound. Um, this game, to me, is perfection. It's one of the games that I still play to this day. Never finished it. But, you know, I just like playing it because it's just so damn playable and so damn good. I, I absolutely love this game. Um, obviously, there was a sequel for it. Well, there's lots of sequels for it, but the one I was more familiar with was the one F-Zero X on the N64. And as great as that is, I still prefer the Super Nintendo version. And reason being is because it's just, I played this the most, you know? It is just amazing. It wowed me as a kid, you know, the speed that you're going at. Oh, and I think the only thing that was really lacking on this was that it wasn't two players you know that was the only thing that was lacking otherwise i think this game would have been the perfect five out of five so i would give this game a four out of five you know obviously super mario kart had two players split screen but this played on a full screen and it was just just so damn good so anyway let me tell you a little bit about the next game then that I'll be uh, playing and talking about if I can find it on my list here. So the next game at number nine. Ooh, it's a good one. Let me just find it here on this. Uh, where are you here? I'll give you a clue. It's the third game in a certain series of games. It was known as Pro Protector in the um, States. Oh, no, it was Pro Protector here in the UK. What am I talking about? Because, yeah, we, we, we could have something like that. And we had robots instead of sort of like uh, soldiers. Oh, dear. So, anyway, let's see. Let's find some music on this and play it. So, here we go. Let's listen to some of this music. <laughs> How epic is that music? So let me just fade it down a little bit. Let it play in the background. Now, Super Contra 3 or Probotex or the Alien War, whatever you want to call it, 
I had the Japanese version, so it was sort of like soldiers and stuff like that. I didn't get the UK version until many years later, once uh, I got myself like another Super Nintendo. But this game, again, just wowed me. It just it was a huge leap from games I was playing on the 8-bit computers and consoles to what I was getting now, you know. Two-player game, amazing sound, amazing effects, great weapons. God damn, this game is tough. Um, you know, it's just, wow. Honestly, this game is so hard, but I got pretty good at it playing with friends that were maybe a little bit better than me. And I remember that first time, you know, you'd see a boss that's sort of like that turtle thing at the end of the level. And it, you've got to shoot it. You can use like your nuclear thing, which takes up the whole screen and it makes that beautiful color and sound. And there was other levels where the boss just opens up and his head like sticks through. And, oh man, I'd never really played any of the NES Contra games before. Obviously here in the UK, I had played a Griser, um on the ZX Spectrum and on the Amstrad and the Commodore 64. So I was familiar with it. But nothing would have prepared me for this. You know, and there was other levels as well, which were mode seven, which was like a bird's eye view and you could rotate the screen. This game still to this day is a great game to play with two player mode. And I can't wait to play it again. Maybe when Damien comes around at some point after lockdown is over, we can try this game out. So yeah, I love this game, Super Contra 3. Right, so let me get back to my list here. Um, What have I got? Not that prepared. Right. Oh, fantastic game here then. So I'll see if you guys can guess what it is by the music. Where is it? Right, here we go. Uh, let's play this one. Right, so yeah, that is the music from Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. And oh my God, this game blew my mind. Now, I've, I've got to quickly explain. I had a Super Nintendo. I hadn't, I didn't have a PC back then. So I hadn't really exp experienced proper 3D games, you know. I think before this, like only th sort of 3D games I'd played were like hard driving on the arcade or the Star Wars arcade game. But this, you know, it was polygons that like had some sort of shading in it. And what really worked well was just the sort of cuteness of the characters, you know, like the crew and they had like that weird sort of like language that they spoke on. And this game just just wowed me. At first, I struggled with it, trying to control it, you know, trying to control something in a whole 3D environment, especially if you're flying, you know, down is up, up is down and but the game, honestly, just completely wowed me. You know, I'd played games where it wasn't sort of like 3D before. It was all like 2D, fake mode 7. But this was slightly different. Uh, you know, really good polygons. But I think what worked well with this was just the amount of color that was on the Super Nintendo. It was, and they used the correct color palette as well. And they, to couple with it with like a really cartoony style graphics, a story that worked really, really well. And, you know, you did feel like you were in some sort of, like, anime Star Wars sort of thing, you know? And the sound effects, this game was just amazing, you know? And obviously, it got a sequel that came out later on on the N64, uh, Lilac Wars, that what well, was known over here, uh, which I played. But for me, I always preferred the Super Nintendo version because I thought it was more playable. And what I do want to play when I do get myself my Super Nintendo Classic Mini is Star Fox 2 which never got released. I think the game was complete, but they decided not to go in that direction. And it is available on the uh, Super Nintendo Classic Mini. Right, so anyway, let's move on to another um, game on my list, if I can find it here. Let me just turn that music down a little bit. Oh, another fantastic one. So let me find this one here. I love the Super Nintendo, guys. Absolutely love it, so... Um, where are you here? So yeah, anyway, the next game I want to be talking about is Super Mario Kart. Um, let's see, which game am I going to do? Here we go, let's play some of this one. 
Enjoy, guys. Right, so yeah, how amazing is Super Mario Kart? Um, now, I've got a little story to tell about this, actually. Now, although I played it and enjoyed it, back in the day, I struggled with it because I wasn't very good at it. I found the controlling a little bit too slippy and slidey, and I could never go around corners without sort of crashing into things. Now, I really got into this game loads many years later, but when I originally first played it, you know, I did enjoy it. You know, I enjoyed the battle mode. I enjoyed playing in two players. I enjoyed the sort of the whole characters, and it was something I hadn't seen before where, you know, like mascots from you know a, a, a series of sort of like consoles that... You know, they just did so well. You know, like you had like Toad, you had the Princess, you had Donkey Kong. And wow, it, it just wowed me. Now, because I was rubbish at it, I kept on losing and it made me not enjoy the game as much. So it wasn't until like I think I was about in my 30s, I ended up doing an event in Croydon in Play Nation Games and um, I met a guy called Sammy Ketten, I believe his name is. He's on the uh, Get to the Chopper group. Really nice bloke. And he sort of like, he's like a Super Nintendo, uh, Super Mario Kart champion, and organizes events and things like that. And I watched him play. And as he was playing, he was talking to me. And I started seeing little things he started doing to help him progress in the game. You know, how to take those turns, how to jump and slide. And sometimes you've got to jump, jump, jump and slide and stuff like that. And... Later on, I went home that day and I started using some of those techniques and I got a lot better. I'm nowhere near as good as Sam, you know, Sammy, but um, my God, it, it opened up the game and made me enjoy it a lot more. Have I finished this game? No, because of lack of time of being an adult. If I had had these skills as a youngster, my God, I probably would have finished this game. But uh, yeah, I really love uh, Super Mario Kart. I know this is probably some of people's favorite, like, Mario Kart game and probably would have been up on their favorite Super Nintendo games but for me because I was rubbish at it as a kid well, I say as a kid as, as a kid in my teens I should say and I only really got pretty decent at it as an adult um it's not higher up in the charts but I love it you know I mean I prefer it now a lot more than uh, the N64 Mario Kart because the N64 Mario Kart I just I enjoyed it at the time, but I find it just very bland. There's not a lot to it. My possibly favorite one is Double Dash or the GameCube. But all right, then let's move on to the next game. Then the next game I want to talk about is, okay, it's my sixth game. I love this game. Love it, honestly. There's so many good games for the Super Nintendo that I thought this would be higher, but there was other games that I enjoyed a lot more. So it is Donkey Kong Country. So let's play some music from this. Wow. Honestly, I first saw this, like the screenshots of this game in a Nintendo magazine and I was just blown out away i couldn't believe it you know at the time people even thought that this was coming out for the ultra 64 which became the n64 you know we hadn't seen graphics like this on a 16-bit console and wow when the game did come out everyone went crazy for it it was an amazing platforming game um it basically brought Donkey Kong back to the mainstream, you know. Before that, he had sort of slightly disappeared. He was just like a side character in Mario Kart games and stuff like that. But in this, Rare did an amazing job. And this is like when Rare just really picked up steam with like their console games. And what I'm going to do a little bit, um, I'm going to play one of my other favorite tracks to play in the background, which is Aquatic Ambience, which is one of my favorite tunes ever. Right, where are you? It is just such a beautiful tune. So I'll be playing that in the background while I'm telling you about this. Now, I bought this game. Um, I'm a big platform fan. Back in the 16-bit days, I was a big platforming game uh, fan. You know, the games like Super Mario World, this, you know, obviously on the Mega Drive, sort of like Sonic the Hedgehog. 
I played games like Joe Mac, Caveman Ninja, um, just loads of other games. But this, the graphics were so different to anything I'd seen before. Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, um, it was just mind blowing. The music, the, the, the overall feel of the world that I was in, the characters were crazy and wacky. It had that sort of British sense of humor because of Rare. But then when I went into the water level for the first time and I heard this music from Aquatic Ambience, I was like, oh my God. And I fell in love with this game. Um, believe it or not, I, I know a lot of people say Donkey Kong Country 2 is the better game. I have only ever played that maybe a few times in recent years because I think by the time that came out, I'd got myself other consoles or I was going out clubbing and stuff like that. But this is the game I'll always go back to. And it just still blows me away how they managed to get all this on a 16-bit console, you know? And it's got that, spoiler alert here, that ending. I've got a mute button here so I can cough and no one can hear that. <laughs> but you can probably see me on the video. So yeah, I, I love Donkey Kong Country. I'll probably try and complete it again. And then... Um, try donkey kong country 2 and 3 i played donkey kong 64 but i don't know it just wasn't as good as say banjo kazooie all right so let me go on to my next game then on my chart what have i got here then so oh my god an, an, another fantastic one let me see if i can find it here again it's another game that just blew my mind uh let's have a where are you you guys can wait. The music on this game is just amazing anyway. Right, here we go. Here we go. Wait till you hear the music in this. Oh, wrong track. Let me try another one. Let me try this one. Hmm. Not the music I was looking for. That'll do anyway. The game I'm talking about is Super Castlevania on the Super Nintendo. Have a listen to that. Oop, I'm dropping my stuff. Let me see if I can find um, one of my favorite tunes, actually. It's not that one. It's not Bloody Tears. Oh, here we go. This is one of my favorite tunes ever on the Super Nintendo. Or just in gaming, just really. You know, if I was to do a list, this would include it. So anyway, have a listen to this, guys. It's just stunning absolutely stunning i'll just leave that playing in the background now again i saw this in a magazine and saw the graphics i've always been a big sort of movie monster fan with things like dracula frankenstein werewolves and monsters so i got this game now i was aware of castlevania but again because i didn't have an nes i hadn't really played them and so this was the first castlevania game that i played and what a place to start. Honestly, I find it kind of hard nowadays to go back to Castlevania 1 and 2 because this was my first impression of Castlevania and I was just blown away by it. So don't get me wrong, I do enjoy Castlevania 1 and 2, but I haven't got the fondness that I do for this game. I find those games too difficult and this, the difficulty level, is just right. It just looks amazing, sounds amazing, I love the control of your character, the way you can just put the whip all around you, the sound effects, the music later on. The graphics just keep on getting better. This is one of the things about this game. As you progress and you enter Dracula's castle and then you start discovering things, the later you are in the game, the better the graphics get. It starts doing mode seven trickery. And some of the bosses are just so amazing and ingenious in this, you know? 
I absolutely love, you know, Castlevania 4. And what I didn't realize at the time when I played this game, that this was a remake of the first Castlevania game. I had no idea about that until I think I spoke to uh, Darren from ABC Start. So, um, yeah. See what, guys? I'm going to have a drink of water, listen to some of this music in the meantime. Right, so yeah, sorry guys, I was getting a bit thirsty then. Right, let's move on to the next game then. So what number am I at then in my chart here? All right then, so uh, I should be at number four then with Super Mario World. So let's find some music from Super Mario World to play. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah, I'll just play that music there. Actually, I know exactly the music I want to play on this. It, it just basically wowed me when I found this. Bear with me. Where are you? Was it this one? Well, it wasn't that one, but that will do. This game and the music is just phenomenal. There's just something that Mario World does so right. You know, all the music's very upbeat, it's bouncy. When the music's creepy, like when you enter a castle, it's sinister. I love this game. This game is perfection, platforming perfection. It is better than Donkey Kong Country because I, I just find it, th there's more to it really. The graphics are a lot more simpler, but at the time, my God, this game was amazing. Now, obviously I had played uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, Mario Brothers 1, and Mario Brothers 3, and I didn't think Mario Brothers 3 could be topped, but this one, oh my god, just, I think eclipsed that, you know, because there was just so many hidden things that you could find, so many hidden exits, you know, the Forest of Illusion, um, I'm just trying to find every single exit in this game was kind of tough, you used to finish this game all the time, you didn't have to get all the levels to finish the game, there were so many little ways you could do it, but, um, yeah, I, but now I can't even do this game. I can't even finish it. I get stuck in the Forest of Illusion, but I, I love it. I absolutely love Mario World. You know, you can play it as two-player game. You know, you take turns. One can be Mario, one can be Luigi, but I mean, I love the power. Oh, Yoshi, first appearance of Yoshi. Um, this game, again, is just stunning. It's a game that I'll still play to this day, but because I'm old now, I've got no skills. I struggle with it. Right, let's move on to my next game then. I'll turn down the music on that a little bit. Right, so where are we then? We're going to go to number three then. At number... Th oh my god, what an amazing game. Let's see if I can find it. Listen to this music. The game I'm talking about is Super Metroid. Wow. Just wow. That's what I'll say about this game. This game, again, like uh, Castlevania on the Super Nintendo, I'd never really played the Metroid games on the uh, NES. I think I'd probably paid, played a Game Boy um, version of it. But when I played this game, I hadn't played anything like this before. You know, it was that whole... Beat a boss, discover this, find a new area, backtrack, your map started expanding. Um, there was hidden secrets amongst the maps, the power-ups, the bosses, uh, the scenery. Um, I, I just honestly, I hadn't played anything like this. Obviously, in my personal opinion, this got slightly bettered with Castlevania Symphony of the Night many years later. But this, to me, did it first. And it's, it's a game that... I still can't believe it's on a Super Nintendo. The music, like I said, the atmosphere, uh, some of the other music on this. Let, let me see if I can find it. One of my other favorite tracks. It's just absolutely amazing. Let's have a little look if I can find it. 
Um, is it Brinstar? Let's have a look. It could be this one. Guys, listen to this. I'll I'll crank up the volume. Stunning. Absolutely fantastic. Honestly, this game just wowed me. It still wows me to this day. I need to play it again. The game is huge. It's fantastic. Um, wow. Honestly, that's all I can say is wow. If I was to review it, Super Metroid, it would just be wow. Right, anyway. So let's move on to my uh, last few games then. At number two then, one of my other favorite games. And again, it's a game that got me into the series, which I hadn't really played before. And that is A Link to the Past, Legend of Zelda. So let's find our music on this, play some of that. Uh, where are you, Zelda? Probably in Z. No, that's not in Z. Oh, I haven't got the music for that. Maybe I'll just sing it along. It's probably under L. Here we go. Let's play some music from this then. How awesome is that? I love this. Actually, um, the first game that I played in the Zelda series was um, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason I picked that game up. Didn't have any knowledge on the Zelda games. Maybe I saw something on like a magazine and I picked up Link's Awakening. And then obviously I bought this like sometime later. And my God, is this game huge? It's amazing. The story, uh, the boss battles. Jeez, uh, this game is just amazing. And it's what made me fall in love with like uh, the Zelda game series. I mean, obviously after this, you know, I'd played sort of like the Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, Minish Cap, uh, Phantom Hourglass, I think it was called, uh, Ocarina of Time, and possibly one of my favorites, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess. Um, I haven't played the, the latest Zelda game. I really, really, really want to play the um, remake of um, Link's Awakening, but this one here, again, I get lost in this game. Um, even to this day, when I just play The Legend of Zelda and if I've, I've got it on like a save slot somewhere, I just get transported back to that game where everything looks so familiar and feels the same and just the sounds, the music, the story, I just, I'm home. And I love, you know, the character Link. Uh, this game is just amazing, guys. All right, so let me just go on to my uh, last level, last level, <laughs> last uh, game in my chart then. So I think it's pretty predictable what I'm going to go for, for those of you that know me. And let's see if I can find it here. And the game I want to talk about is obviously Street Fighter 2. So let's play some music from Guile, I think. How amazing is this? And by the way, Gile's music does go with everything. Honestly, that is so damn good. What can I say about Street Fighter 2, which hasn't been said by myself and loads of other people? It is just perfection. And it is the sole reason why I bought myself a Super Nintendo. At the time, it wasn't on the Sega Mega Drive, so I bought myself it on import. And my God, did I play this game non-stop. 
And about a year later, I bought myself Super, uh, bought myself Street Fighter Turbo. So another sort of game on import, which was probably another hundred and twenty pounds. <laughs> and then I stupidly sold it, um, probably for about what thirty quid. Oh, geez, in hindsight. But um, yeah, this game just. I love the arcade game, and to me at the time, this was arcade perfect, you know, just the big sprites, I thought it had all the music and all the animation and all the levels and everything like that, it's as close to perfection at the time, really, I couldn't see any differences, obviously I can now, but I love it, it's just the nostalgia of playing all these games, getting all the different endings with all these wonderful characters, um, Playing the game with my friend Dan, playing against other people. There's just so many hours and so many sort of like years I've spent playing this. And Street Fighter 2 is my favorite game out there of all time, you know. If I was to do a list, it's definitely up there. Well, I've just gone and ruined a future list now by telling you that. So anyway, guys, yeah. Um, oh, let's play some more music. Just playing some sound effects there. Yeah, we'll play that then. So anyway, guys, what I do want to say is then uh, just a big thank you for everyone that listens to the show, The Andy Godoy Show, Get to the Chopper, The ZX Spectrum Podcast, Good Film, Bad Film. If you haven't already, guys, I'd really, really appreciate if you could leave me an iTunes review. Honestly, that really helps me out. Um, if you want to help me out another way, uh, comment on the YouTube, comment on the Facebook, share it with your friends. Um, I will be doing more of these Andy Godoy shows. Again, I'm not editing. I'm just going to have fun with this, you know. Um, that's the whole point of the Andy Godoy show, to do podcasts when I can't record with the other guys. And if I've got something to talk about, why not talk about it? I think the next episode, I want to be talking about The Invisible Man, which is a new film. Um, I saw it recently. I enjoyed it. I'll tell you more about that next time. So let me turn off this music here then. And uh, yeah, I just say like, thanks very much for listening, guys. And I'm going to play some, well, I'm going to play like the intro music again, which is also my outro music. This is like stop music, which I've got on the Roadcast studio until I can find something which will suit the show. So yeah, thanks very much, guys. See you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>